Good afternoon from Tokyo and Hong Kong. I'm Norbert Gierke, founder of Tokyo Fintech and the host for the Exponential Finance Podcast. I'm very pleased to be here today with Terence So from Nano Insure. Hi, Terence. Hi, Norbert. It's really good you having me this afternoon. It's a great to be invited. I'm so excited. And you and uh, Nano Insure have been entering Japan recently. I know you, you've been here during the FinTech Week in spring and you took part at Fino Pitch, for example. So this is a target market for you. It's absolutely. Japan is one of the largest insurance or life insurance markets in the world. It's a uh, fantastic market for insurance as we are very focused on Asia markets. It's a very challenging market, but it is very promising at the same time. And I think if you look across all the different flavors of fintech that are there, obviously you are, uh, and we'll, we'll see the presentation in a moment, but you are yeah an insurance software provider so you're not the regulated business yourself your clients are and i think if you look at, across the different flavors of fintech foreign insure tax in japan have done really well because you don't need to go through the regulation you need to adjust to the requirements on what your clients need of course but you don't have these multi-year licensing process uh, to start up a payments business i think if you count just if you go by the numbers on and seeing how many foreign uh, fintechs we have insure tech seems to be the leading segment it's excited that we have not only us and european but also a homegrown Asian player here in the market. With that, I'll hand it over to you. You have quite a bit of material to explain what Nano Insure is. We're looking forward to that. Let me have a, a few minutes to explain what Nano Insure is and what we can uh, help our target audience, particular for live insurance carriers. So it's a basic operation philosophy that we want to close our customers. And we provide a solution that they love can use and continue to use, that is what the purpose is. So the theme of non-insurance business is we want to empower our customers to innovate products with our local platform. We can using our, we can using our platform to deliver a point of sales applications, B2B2C portal or any D2C portal, et cetera. And ultimately we, our platform, our local platform to modernize the process administration systems. So that is what um, a principle, what we can do for our clients. So let me start with who we are. Nani Insurance is a homegrown Hong Kong based company. And we are fortunate to grow to Singapore in 2020. And we expand to Japan this year uh, because we want to get closer with our customers. We want to have a local support to our customers. So, so and this year we are fortunate to have two clients uh, go live with our application in Tokyo. Some statistics we would like to share. Um, customers already spend in 10 Asia countries. There's more than 35,000 insurance advisors and customers are using our software daily. So annually, our customers generate more than 1.8 billion value of new business in any given year in the last two years. And you can see this is our uh, key clients, which is including FWD, Generali, and BMP Paribas Cardiff across Asia Pacific. We talk about myself and the co-founder. Clara, as a CTO, I know her for more than 16 or 7 years before we co-founded Nano Insure. We worked together to get more deals and we deliver the value for these logos, these clients in past 10 or 16 years. I'm not named every single of them, but that will bring us a lot of wealth of knowledge, our know-how in terms of business and technologies know-how to non-insurance. And we finally, we, we, we think that we can do more by ourselves. So we founded non-insurance. Um, we also have a, a team of lieutenants. They share the same vision. Um, these guys, uh, girls have a tremendous experience in insurance tech and they work for many of the insurance uh, carrier before they join another insurance. 
And having said that, each of us has working together more than four to 16 years. So we knew each other well. We provide a solutions from front end to all the way to back end. So no matter insurance company, they need to a portal or the customer need to a point of sales application. Yes, we can do. If the customer want to have modernized their life at Mint without replacing, yes, we do can help them. So we're using a microservices architectures, a local platform to enable everything to become a more and modernized technology stack so that when they grow, they can scale up much faster. And we're also being recognized by the industry. So maybe with the name of them, we are one of the three finalists for insurance tech in year 2023. I lost to Botech, the Unicorn insurance tech, but I, I'm very fortunate to being with them. Um, it's a great experience. So non insurance also won some of the award, like um, we were the, the insurance tech uh, vertical winner at Global Faster in 2022. Um, so that is what we being so proud in terms of our customer validations. In terms of financial, we are quite great in terms of the performance, in terms of operating of profitability or how we're using our capital, how effective we deliver the value of customers. We are in the top notch, even compared with a sector leader, with a global player. And non insurance is profitable since our inception in the last five years. More importantly, we deliver the real value to our customers. And as of today, 100% project successful rate and with uh, all happy customers. So maybe I'll stop here if you had any questions about what we can do for our client. Um, when you look at what the typical implementation is, so you said you can cover from the front to the back, but when you go into a client for the first time, yep. what has been the experience? What are they most likely to try out first? I usually will try for questions. Well, I'll take an example. When I approach FOD, I usually ask the leader, the agency leader or the financial leader, um, how fast you want to introduce a new product and bring it to the market. And how do you compare with your peer competitors? How, where are you now? And in terms of financials, so how much you need to cost per product, you introduce a product. So that is a questioning to help you to understand what will be the challenge they're facing right now. And then we provide, when we provide what we can do for you. I follow the same logics. So a typical customer uh, tell me, Hey, Terrence, I need to introduce my product six to 20 weeks. Um, and I respond to him, how about you can consider our solutions? I prove to you, we can shorten for one to four weeks time and lower 50%. Would you like us to get more detail? So usually that is a, the questions I would like to ask. So what comes up with the questions, if I add a solution vendor, how I can help you to gain more customers? how I can help you to do things more effectively and efficiently. Our well, solutions. Thank you. So I think the components now will show us also what the different application areas are. So let's dive into that. Yeah, thank you, Robert. We are really providing modular solutions, meaning the modular is working together or separately. So a, a customer like BMP Paribas, the license all the license, the, the four modules. Some of the customer may be just only license for one particular module and they work fine. You can license all now, or you can step-by-step step to license any of them to meet your business objective in distributions, in product creations, or policy administrations. And we provide a scaling microservices architectures. That is the modern technology stack you can keep involved in the next 10 or 15 years. And is that in cloud basis? It's all, no matter this is a private cloud or public cloud, yes, we do have solutions for you right now. The technology stack, very simple, very um, common technology stack, a lot of people are using, and also many of insurance uh, company are using pretty much the same stack, approved by the corporate. And 
there's a lot of questions asked me, Terence, when I in the new markets. The very, very first question I would faced, hey, how you differentiate with other competitors like whoever, Zactac, Pick3, um, Jesco, Insurance MO, Coherent, wh whatever it is. So I usually take example using this particular slide. What we can do is we provide a combine a local platform, a enterprise local platform for enterprise development, like you, like Unquote or Mandex can provide. We marry together. In the US, Unquote is an absolute fantastic platform. They can do a lot of applications with writing a single line of code. However, when it when it ensures specific, they need to get somebody to provide a no-code platform product creation so that they can work together. But now the insurance can provide both in the same platform. I think for example, one of the customer, they want to introduce a D2C product faster. They can using our local platform to create a user experience. At the same time, we can provide a local platform, no-code platform, just load Excel spreadsheet, do anything, and we provide product API and combine together we can go to markets. It's a much, much faster process. It's much less a cohesive, compliant platform that the insurance customer can trust. So that is the benefit, the real benefit. We're talking about five times faster than typical time to market. We also provide a 100% user manageable platform that the insurance customer can use it by themselves. So total cost, the total cost ownership is sharply dropped. Some of the customer report to us, they can save up to 70%, save millions of dollars using our platform. And insurance customers, I mean, our customer do not need to rely on the IT, do not need to rely on a vendor. They can using the internal resources, uh, a citizen coder or a IT or even another insurer. So we provide that kind of flexibility to a customer. They can use our tools very effectively and cheaper. And that is a little bit, I'm so sorry, it's, it's a little bit too much detail about what our approach is. But, but think about it. If you have a product that your actuarial is doing and you have a user experience and you have a product team, um, your compliance team to have a financial analysis of things they need to set it up in your point of sales solutions. You need to do a, a, a lot of time, but when you combine everything without, light, without writing a single line of code, you just configure it in the platform and we can do it five times faster. In addition, we also can provide a product profitability before you launch this product to all channel or particular, or particular channel. So that we can provide to the, our customers. Time faster, multiple channels, product profitability before you launch a new product. So how we do that? A lot of people talk about Excel to API technologies. However, what we're seeing is some of the vendor, they need the customer to fit into their own spreadsheet or own format of Excel. We don't. We just take Mr. Customer's own Excel spreadsheet. We convert, we transform to our database, meaning much scalable. We also want to define, which is other vendor cannot provide. We can define the product campaign, the product channel, or any specific thing like commissions with differences. After we configure it or using RT to, to, to develop a product or process, we do all the testing. We do all the auto testing. Um, thousands of scenarios to make sure all the rates, the combinations absolutely correct. We're exposed to API and our customers channel, agency, bank assurance, D2C, B2B2C can consume the product API instantly. To compare other competitors, what we're facing right now, our solutions are much scalable. We talk about thousands of customers using our software at the same time, and any of the response is talk about uh, less than one second. It also provide a local platform. You just can drag and drop the user experience. Um, 
that's a particular use case for a, our Japan client. So the language is not a problem for us. The address is not a problem for us. The only channel, no matter this is a web, this is an app, this is an iPhone, this is a Xiaomi, this is a Samsung phone. What it sizes is it can define in our platform. So when you go to market, you have the product, you also have a user experience, and that's what can provide to a customer in a much faster and cheaper way. So maybe I stop a little bit about here. Is there any questions from you, Norbert, or something I do not describe very detailed? No, it's very clear. Thank you, Terence. Just from a like commercial perspective, and your you've been driving the sales, of course, very successfully here. But who's the buyer internally at the insurance company? Where's your entry point? And the background to that question is a bit like when we all know that the corporate IT delivery cycle with yes. legacy technology are fairly long. So when the first SaaS platforms came out and people saw how easy it could be to whatever run reconciliations in the cloud, yes. we're using their, their corporate or even the personal business, uh, credit cards to uh, buy this because it replaced so many hours of Excel work, for example, right? And that makes a corporate IT departments very nervous because then you have business people, operations people introducing new technology to the firm that is not necessarily governed properly, et cetera. And so how for your platform as a, as a no code platform, how do these dynamics work out with you, the corporate IT department, and then the, the functional buyer in the insurance company? Thank you for the question. So usually when we go to our corporate client, that will be the corporate IT as a very beginning focal point. The reason is I usually talk to the head of IT or regional IT. We're not in competitive, we are your friends. We're helping you do things much faster, more effectively. You can save the cost and you guys, those costs can translate to financial cost saving and you provide a much faster product time to market to your user and your friends. I, I, I take an example. One of our customers adopt our software for one country first, and they can see the value that we can provide a great invitation. Under, we understand what they really need. So ultimately, for one particular country, it brought it all the way up to the group IT, and the group IT evaluate our product. For example, the client have a 10 to 8 countries. And how about we can using non insurance software to standardize those product configurations at group level, and we authorized the country level to define their own product. So the group IT has centralization of all the platform. When one country deal one product, another country can use in similar configuration, which is save a lot of costing. At the same time, the corporate IT can control or manage or or monitor or improve those product configurations by their own team. So that is what we provide. We enable the group IT to provide the software solution to their customer, which is the functional um, buyer, like the, uh, the agency or the distribution head or other departments. So that is the key objective. Not insurance is a friend of the corporate IT. And ultimately, no, we never. No, so, sorry, that's the, that's the idea key. So that specific client is really well governed, right? And the opposite side of the spectrum is where essentially every local entity in the country can almost do what they want. And then they actually do that. And if you look across six different countries, there's six different configurations at least, and nobody will be able to pull it all together. Maybe. Right, in reality, some are in between, but of course, if it's well governed, like you described, where it involves head office or at least regional leadership, then certainly that makes for a much better, much more successful implementation, I, I would agree. Somehow we also proved, we, we did have the group IT to stand out, to provide a much better services to the end customers. And that particular references will, will, will help us to engage another potential customers. And do you, 
how do you see the IT departments dealing with what is essentially a new tool, right? If I was a software engineer all my life and I actually like to write code, then mm -hmm. this is still a bit my enemy. But at the same time, I, I'm more productive and I deliver quicker, as, as you said. But do you see IT departments using existing staff who also still maintain legacy applications to transition into your tooling? Or do you see them hiring new people specifically for building applications on this new stack? We are using most of cases. Our clients are using the existing staff. Our clients enable the staff to have new skills. I take example. I also I, I describe how the Excel to API technology works. But at the same time, in the left hand side, number two, our customers, the IT department, they can still writing their own code to configure a product. So the skill they already have, it it doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't make sense. They, no, you, you should not use it. So then a way of product configuration or development, they can still use in coding, or they can using the drag and drop or using Excel spreadsheet. That what we're seeing our customer benefit is they have a new tool, more, more modernized technology stack, but at the same time, they can keep the, the traditional way of doing things like coding. We love coding. Sometimes, some of the cases, we don't think our software can do everything without coding. So we still have some kind of a flexibility for our customer to write their own code, but at the same time, it's compliant to the whole architecture or compliant to the whole technology stack. I believe I don't want to dominate the power configuration or, or IT things. We just provide a flexibility to our customer. They can using things um, more flexible, more easy. Yeah, it's just, at the same time, I think we've all seen it, right? We've been all around the block a bit that uh, the, the wheel gets reinvented in corporate technology more often than it should be. And even if you say, we've got this functionality somewhere else in another application, why don't you reuse it? You can still refactor it and so on, but take it as a starting point. People, developers still tend to be hesitant and saying, I, I want to write it myself, right? I only trust yeah. my own code. And yeah. so in a way, it's also, it's actually good to take them away from coding things that are not necessary. So if you can cover any percentage, 70, 80% of the functionality and can be configured drag and drop. And then the, the last 20% will be what really differentiates the company or the product, right? Also in the interaction with the end customer, that's really where these rare scarce resources should be spent. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, maybe let's talk about a little AI. <laughs> It's one of, I know it's still a, 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 a trend or hype or really take over. I really, really don't have a clue, but, but um, as far well, as we are seeing um, every single customer, potential customer we are meeting, they talk about how the Gen AI or AI can improve the product sales, uh, the product configurations, the product administrations, say, such as underwriting. So there's a lot of discussion, a lot of potential use cases that they can apply with but as far as today, at least in Hong Kong, we don't see that uh, many cases are really in production. Um, uh, as a, a startup, although we have five profitable, I be, uh, we still believe technologies to lead, to do things much greater and faster. So AI, what we are using right now for our internal and for our potential customer is, we blend our AI assistant during the point of sales. So point of sales means um, point of sales system with a set of, of programming for the advisor, insurance advisor to derive the financial needs to calculate the affordability and what kind of product to meet the customer's objective for life or for medical. And that is a potential AI use case can be applied. I take example, when I talk to you, Norbert, we're discussing things. We talk about your needs. We talk about your financial background, etc., etc. Imagine when we just finish a five minutes or three minutes of conversations. 
so the AI can help the advisor to provide a plain suggestion recommendations to the insurance advisor. And the insurance advisor can base his experience to validate what can what will be the product they can potentially meet Norbert's product objective. So that is a way can AI can help. So that's why we and right now we prove a concept with one customer to using the AI to help the insurance advisor do during the discharge process. I take example, the just case is if I want to create a product config, if I if I'm advisor, I want to provide a product, I need to input gender, age, smoking habits, um, what kind of product, what kind of uh, lifestyle, etc. So in terms of type everything, you just speak to the chat. GPT AI and automatically they can generate a product and become an illustration and you can draw and draw, you can do the simulation in front of your customers. It's a cool thing, it's a viable, it's a doable, it's available right now in our on our solutions. So we are seeing generate gener, generative AI or AI can definitely help the insurance advisor during the point of sales or a very beginning of engaging the customer's sales process. What we offer, not upon ourselves, not only for the comprehensive end-to-end -end switch from prospecting all the way to closing or delivering the e-policy, but also we can see that the AI is potentially a blended solutions to help insurance advisor to create the value in terms of upselling, cross-selling, maybe add more value to end customers. So that's the new things we developed right now, and we anticipate to be launched by quarter four this year. Cool. Yeah, I totally agree. I think there there are other use cases or, or very similar use cases in call centers generally, even almost independent of the industry, right? Where it can be based on your FAQs, but then also can be augmented with a bit of sentiment analysis, right? Is the customer getting angry, suggest responses to it to calm them down, et cetera. So definitely agree there's a, a big use case. I actually had Gen AI on my list of questions, but probably as a slightly different vector and more, if you think about co-pilots, right? For the software engineers, yep. it, it does make them so much more efficient at least those who use it truly professionally and for example there was a google study out internally probably two months ago or so and they reached the point where 50 percent of the code and that's really on a character count basis had been completed with ai cell right and it might not be all the most difficult segments or so, but still it's, it's quite a significant number. And so my question is more around, as we were using more of these co-pilots, co auto-generated code, is that ultimately right a threat for a low-code or no-code platform like yours? Because maybe you just tell the AI in a couple of years saying, I want the so I want a distribution layer for my whatever yep. travel insurance product and uh, give it three examples and then evolve it from there relatively quickly. Yes, indeed. I fully agree. I, I think that is one of the area we also consider it. And that is an absolutely a number of potential use case to do that. So the programmer become a, a prompt programmer. They just asking, they just pump the questions and the AI can do most of things for, for them. The area is very interesting. I just can't re, I just can't imagine back to two years how the technologies can gone so fast and so incredible. I don't know how to use it in a word, but it's very sometimes I using the word scary. Yeah, it is and it, ultimately it did come out of nowhere, right? For most of us who are not deep in that field when GPT-3 and ChatGPT came out. And you were founded 2019, 2020 or so, right? So that was essentially before that wave. So it might not have, maybe was some of that was visible for you, but in its entirety, the magnitude, I think 
only few people could foresee. <laughs> indeed. Maybe I, I continue and, and then yes, we please. have. Uh, thank you, Terence. Well, well, thank you for, indeed, Norbert. So one of the great things is that the part of software I just described is a software solutions for insurance advisor to get new sales, not only working on online, he's working using in offline. So no matter this is a scenario without an internet access, insurance advisor can get, they can do the sales anytime, anywhere they want. When that is a connect, connectivity to sync all the applications, the signatures to the back end and the back end can ticket the applications and process in the back end. So, so what I'm trying to say is the point of sales can be using in a mature market like in Japan, Taiwan, Singapore, which is connectivity absolutely great, or using a using in the countries which is in developing stage, um, Cambodian, Vietnam, and Philippines, or Indonesia. So that is the software that we from Asia Pacific consider it. What we see many of the European or US software, they never think about, hey, why I need to use it offline? But it's a little slightly different from market segmentations, but we do. So one of the biggest advantages is our software not only can be using online, but also in offline. People talk about API. Yes, we provide API. So everything we can create the insurance API for the customer. We're not, uh, I, I have to say, I love insurance MO. I, I love them. They provide a lot of in existing API for the customer they are customized. But what are our perspective differences? Using our software can create a customer API for the insurance solely. So in theory, our customer can create any of these unlimited insurance API for them in terms of distribution, in terms of buying, in terms of policy administrations. It's a different, it's a different approach between us and insurance and more, but it just depends on the customer what they really want. But from our perspective, we do not try to limit what the customer's the API is, we just help the customer to create their own insurance API, which is by local and local platform, meaning that is no need to do coding. And that is a fundamental, the fundamental that insurance can offer to the market. And last on the list, every single insurance, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I take that my word that many of the insurance carrier that facing the edge of either they modernize their policy emission systems to, or to replace the policy emission system, no matter this is life, medical, or non-life of the insurance markets. From life insurance software market, in the past few years, we are we were seeing too many faces, failed cases in replacement project. So when the old system is still in place. The old approach, you replace it by a little bit modern Java applications. But that particular replacement takes three to five years, costs nothing. And from the green screen to a Java GUI screen, but not much business benefit brought to the insurance carrier. And some of the insurance carriers are being funded by the regulator. And we're seeing a lot of cases in Taiwan, in Korea, South Korea, and some other countries. So instead of replacement, non-insurance is using a different approach, what we call a strangler approach. Uh, for example, in one of the cases in Taiwan, we do not replace the core system, the legacy system, but we took out module by modules. So we took out the underwriting module first, and then our customers, a user, to get used to the user experience, they increase the productivity. And then we took an other claim modules doing the same things. And ultimately, that particular legacy system as a book record machine, a database. But all the processed will be processed in another insurance policy emission system, microservices, architectures, 
benefit and enable that kind of new kind of approximation system and process to improve their, their efficiency. The benefit is the projects bring down by spring, nine months, nine months, nine months. The end customer will be much happier because they don't need to do the migration. They don't need to give all the requirement at the very first beginning. And they can have a much faster return of investment because they can using the new things in nine months time instead of five years later. So we have seen that particular approach is quite work. The cost is lower, the risk is lower, the customer is much happier, turnover rate is, is much lower as well. So at the same time to us as a small vendor, our risk is also much lower as well. So we are very optimistic about how our strangle approach in core system modernization, particularly for life insurance market. So maybe I stopped right there as well, because I pretty much I finished all another insurance can provide to the insurance customers. Yes, I'm just agreeing with all you said at the end, we've done this a few times, right? Again, different industry, cap markets, but same approach of peeling the onion rather than trying to retire one core processing system in its whole. And that's, as you said, three, four years project until you do a big bang migration, take certain functions off because many of the legacy systems were also created as an like all singing, all dancing application, right? They had everything built in and nowadays where it's more distributed as far as whatever it might be by right? products, currencies and valuations and, and all this stuff, cash flows, you, you have a much more distributed approach to this. And so you can peel off one by one and that does de-risk it quite a bit. And people get tired, right? If you, you need also success stories, like psychologically, uh, if you only have one success story after four years, maybe, right? If you are successful, that's still a, a very good outcome, but you lost your team along the way because everybody <laughs> got tired of this mega project. And if you can do smaller migrations every six to nine months, yep. I think it's much better for morale as well. Definitely. We've seen the turnover rate, it's, it's improved compared to replacement project. So the insurance advisor, the insurance company do not to lose any of the talent because talent is the most important thing um, for any of companies. Yeah, and, and so you also mentioned the regulator, right? The, the regulator obviously is also conservative and their interest is primarily to protect the end consumer. So often for a new player, in a specific market, the regulator also needs to be comfortable, especially when you say we're doing a, a legacy migration, right? Where you have a significant book that you're migrating. What is the risk of going to a new platform if it's the first implement or one of the early implementations in the market? And you've entered a couple of these already, right? So what's been your experience in dealing with the regulators in, in various places to demonstrate to them that this is a robust enough platform. It protects the end consumer in terms of privacy of data, et cetera. And it, it works well as an incident-free platform stack for the insurer. It's not easy. It's, a, it's always a, a painful process in how hey, we have to work with our customer closed. And it's a because the regulator is the single important stick, stakeholder when we need to launch a new things, new product, new systems. So that is absolutely um, a long process. So the first thing we, we talk to, we, we do not re, we invite. So the customer data is still there, it's still in legacy. We do not migrate any, anything. So when you don't possibly mature or lapse, they're still in the same currency the same customers, the same ID. We do not migrate anything. We just improve the process. So that particular things, the, the, the regulator will be a, a less rigid when they look into that kind of projects. 
So for the insurance company, they can consider it, that approach will be easier to get the green light from the regulator in any of the market in Asia. Yeah, so also in the Japan context, there's, an, I hope I get the company right, but we, it's not only when you, when you look at the real legacy mainframe systems, right? It's yeah. not only IBM that's being used. You have NEC mainframes, you've got Fujitsu mainframes. And I think it was Fujitsu who's actually exiting the market by 2030 or so. So if you're on a Fujitsu mainframe, you always can take some risk right at the tail end maybe. So maybe you can run it two, two years longer or so, but need to get off the platform. That's a great market opportunity to then also say, rather than falling into the trap and, and saying we're going from a Fujitsu mainframe to an IBM mainframe with any tooling that IBM might provide, just go on to a, a modern stack and really yeah, modernize your system and, and make it much more flexible and future, future proof. 100% agreed, Norbert, 100%. So, and because there's the, it, yeah, it's, it's crazy that in a way being conservative is, is understandable. I think the indus, insurance industry overall is pretty conservative. The regulators are conservative, but if you never move, then at some point, the platform that you're running on gets retired and you've probably have been waiting a bit too long. <laughs> That's the nature of our, <laughs> our industry. <laughs> yeah. um, and so from the also soft factor again, but as you implement in Singapore and Hong Kong and Japan, any differences in terms of how people go about the implementation and the approach of project? Any lessons yeah. you have learned and can share? <laughs> Japanese is more demanding than any countries. Take example, a real example. Um, when we implement a, a system, we need to go through the SIT and then the UAT. So usually the SIT is like 80%, 70% pass that will be considered as good in Hong Kong and Singapore market. So that is called an SIT, the integrations. And then the customer from the UAT point, point of view, the end customer, they do the UAT. That is a quite common in Hong Kong, Singapore, Macau, Taiwan. In, in Japan, I was told, Terence, you fail your SIT because you're not meeting our benchmark, which is 99.9% .9 accurate. And I said, it's my abstraction rate. My absentee rate, 99.67% is accurate. I love the Japanese. They are so demanding because they can push my team to the limit to really get a Six Sigma things. But at the same time, I need to invest and in more people more processed, more testing, our software quality to meet the Japanese market requirements. So at the same time, I failed the customer. At the same time, the customer educate us a good lesson. You need to meet the local requirement of Japanese. You have to have the accurate, you have to do the most finest software in the world if you want to in, get into the Japanese market. And then I look back. I heard from the story is 97%, 90% of the foreign company, they fell in Japan because they're not adapt the Japanese culture, the Japanese quality, the demanding of the accuracy. But in the last eight or nine months, it, it was a quite painful to my team because myself and our customer pushed, to, pushed my team to river limits to the edge. But at the same time, after that particular nine months, I think they grown up to next level. And so that's a particular great lesson I learned. Um, I'm glad my customer customers trust myself and my team uh, to implement a project in Japan. Even though they are, we are not regular sitting next to them. Um, so that is a, a, a quite amazing, fantastic journey for me and my team. Yeah, and once you've achieved that quality, it also helps you uh, going work in other markets because 
we probably have no issues then at all. We, when we ran a, a global uh, IT organization, when we replatformed and built the next generation, let's say, of a clearance and settlement system, there were other factors at play as well. But it was generally considered a good idea to do the first rollout in Japan because everything gets checked out so thoroughly, right? You you will find any bug that is still in the system. Well, if you roll it out first in the US, right? So, yeah. Um, you can't be that certain. So uh, yeah. you can play it to your advantage, but yeah, it is uh, it's pretty rigorous. It's the between, the, between the laugh and the tears experience, I would say. So... <laughs> What is the, you've been now five, five years in, into the journey. It's obviously quite a broad offering already that is there. But when, if you look out another two years, yep. what will be different for Nano Insure? There's a great question. We're starting from nothing. We will build our own software. We build our software in, on AWS, on, on native cloud. But when we comes when we went to the market for more conserved industry like insurance, they need us to dockerize to their own on-premise system. At the very beginning, we pretty much have no choice, and we need to meet the regulator. We need to meet the customer requirement that we put our software um, on their own on-premises or public cloud. So next two years, what I'm doing right now is put everything on cloud. So the, all the software solutions, all 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 the software solution and suites. Is on our private cloud. The customer can subscribe at their at their own whatever they want. I think that is a mo one of the way we are doing things a little bit different from from now. And I think many of the insurance company they now think adopt a software as subscriptions. We also we enhance our offering. As I mentioned, we are building our policy administration system module by modules. And from now to 1.5 years. We have a flu bond or policy emission system ready for the markets. So at that time, we will have a more potential customer we can go with. And that is what we see the future is quite bright. The, oh, the good thing is non insurance is profitable, we're structured. We don't have any BC, VC background or PE background. So we can understand our customer list. We based on our own judgment to meet the customer's objective, to bring the value of objective to the customer, not the VC, not the PE on the back. I'm not chasing the, the highest number, but I really want to deliver the great solutions to our customer and the customer become our own sales or advocate to reintroduce to their peers. It's a fantastic position to be in, right? If you can self-fund it and bootstrap it that way, or now even you have quite a number of clients already. If you really needed money, you could do debt financing right on future revenue. Probably there's enough players give you that. So you're still VC free, can determine your own pace, but it's a really enviable position. Indeed, indeed. Is it the thumbs up or? We give the, the question to the floor or? Yeah, I, I don't have anything here. See anything in the no chats, I don't think. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was, was probably looking at the wrong window. I don't know. I think this could, did, did you want to cover one or two of the references or yeah, rather not? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we talk about a lot of things, but we have to prove ourselves by a real customers or by real customers. So that is one of the, one of the cases that uh, after the group, including Hong Kong, Singapore, Macau, uh, and, and other countries. So that is for the Hong Kong Macau cases. Um, but what we not only provide a software solutions, but we together with them will refine the sales process for these particular um, cases. They adopt our software solution. In the meantime, the business impact were we short term the typical sales cycle from 60 minutes to 50 minutes. So meaning the customer, insurance advisor, have more time to understand the customer needs to, to provide a sound advices instead of managing the typing or whatever things. 
So that is a real benefit we can bring to our customers from the back office people, the IT people. They can use our software to introduce product by themselves instead of rely on a third party vendor of a third party vendor's ability or skill set. So the internal IT or our product team, they can configure the product by themselves. They create any product for any channel by themselves. And that is the software already provided to them without a single additional charges. So as long as they pay the subscription, they can use the software, they introduce any product. And we do not charge a friction or premium to enroll. Um, that is the, from a commercial point of view, we are very fair to our customers. And the, the result is extremely well. The agency have touched with 100%. They turn over, they straight through, this STP straight through processing rate is absolutely higher, but I don't, I'm not able to provide the numbers. I'm so sorry. I mean, in terms of customer satisfaction, I was uh, told that's 97% of customers satisfied with the selling cycle. That is a use case for uh, BNP Paribas Cardiff, a, a French insurance in Asia. So they pretty much like us everything from product configurations to point of sales to product administrations. So the one of the benefit is they really take a Excel spreadsheet, lower to our, our engines, they configure it in two hours, and they do the, all the UAT thing, they introduce a new product in one week without our assistance. And that is what we call a really bring the value to our customers. And that particular platform is enable the internal user to self-configure any product or process by themselves. They don't really rely on us. So their job still there, they can increase the, they increase the respon responsibility. There are more things to do instead of just coding. So uh, ultimately, we are heard that the internal IT have more satisfactions than they outsource to the third party. I think the last not the least that is uh, for one of the local Taiwanese insurance insurance company is a top five insurance company in Taiwan. They saw too many failed cases in Taiwan, like Nanshan Insurance being fined uh, a quite a lot of number. So instead, they come to us, hey Terence, whether we can have a new things together with you to brainstorm. Please help us to to using your stringler approach to modernize the post emission system. So what, what they do is they're using the claim claim modules as a one of the pilot projects. So we redefine the architectures, we tell them how to do the coding, how the coding, how the configurations, and we're managing move the project for the internal team to continue their journey instead of pay a lot of money to other third party to modernize their post emission system. So, so what I'm trying to say is we listen to the customers we meet the customer needs, we keep their job longer, and that at the same time, we provide a solution to help them, to help their end user to do things faster and cheaper. So that's the value of another insurance. So thank you so much for your time. I think I, I pretty much will uh, finish my presentations and, 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 and our pitch. So last but not least, Asia Focus, 100% customer references. We proved ourselves in different countries, most challenging countries. And I'm still passionate with insurance tech, even though I've worked for the industry for more than 25 years. Thank you, Norbert. Wonderful. Thank you, Terence. That was awesome. Easy to find. So you're on LinkedIn on at the front of the presentation. People want to reach out. And what was your email and the, the mobile phone number as well? So if anybody got excited about renovating their insurance technology stack now where to find Terence. Then hopefully before the end of the day, we'll see you back in Japan as well and can do this in person as too. Yep. Looking forward. Our version is 100% localized in Japanese with Super. real customers. Thank you again, Norbert. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you, Terence. Thanks everybody for appreciating here. Bye. Bye.